So in this video, we're going to look at the components of the hand examination, particularly looking at the nerves and the muscles in which they supply. So this is something that I struggled with simply because you had to consult many different texts on just this single topic. So let's just start off with a quote by Miss Norbury, something that she had asked the class of North Shore High School. So which of you have ever felt victimized by Regina George? The radial nerve is known as the reaching nerve, as it supplies the triceps to extend the elbow, the extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis, the extensor carpi ulnaris to extend the wrist, and the finger extensors. So should a patient have a radial nerve palsy, they may present with a wrist drop. In terms of sensation, the nerve supplies the lateral three and a half fingers of the dorsal aspect of the hand. Simply put, just test the sensation at the first web space. The median nerve supplies the top of the fingers and the lateral three and a half fingers of the palmar aspect of the hand. Test its sensation on the tip of the index finger. It supplies the flexicarpi radialis, which flexes the wrist, the thena muscles for thumb abduction, the flexor pollicis longus to flex the thumb, and the FDSs, which flexes the fingers at the MCP joint and PIP joints. The lateral two FDPs, which flexes the fingers at the DIP joint. To test the FTP, block the same fingers FDSs by keeping the MCP and PIP joints extended. And it also supplies the lateral two lumbricals, which are intrinsic muscles in the hand which allow for flexion at the MCP joint and extension at the PIP joint. When asked to make a fist, the patient may present with a hand of benediction. So as you make a fist, there's failure of the lumbricals and the flexors of the index and middle fingers. This is unlike an ulnar claw, which is, involves a problem of the fourth and fifth digit. A carpal tunnel syndrome occurs when there's compression of the median nerve as it runs through the carpal tunnel. It frequently occurs in middle-aged women or those in their third trimester of pregnancy. It presents with nocturnal waking with a burning sensation relieved by shaking the hand. On examination, you will note abnormal sensation in the median nerve distribution and wasting of the thena muscles. A positive tunnels test, which is a tap on the wrist causing electric shock symptoms, and a phalanx test where full flexion of the wrist held for 60 seconds causes symptoms as you compress the nerve may occur. The phalanx test is more specific, as the tunnels test may be positive for other nerves which may run in the area. The ulnar nerve supplies the flexocarpi ulnaris, which together with the flexocarpi radialis flexes the wrist, the hypothenus, which controls the movement of the little finger, the medial FDPs, which will flex the medial two DIP joints. Its sensory innervation is to the medial one and a half fingers of the palmar surface of the hand, and one would test its sensation on the tip of the little finger. Then the ulnar nerve also supplies the medial lumbricals. Failure of this nerve may cause an ulnar claw. An ulnar claw occurs spontaneously due to failure of the lumbricals. This causes hyperextension at the MCP joint and flexion at the PIP joint, and this involves the fourth and fifth digits only. Also, some patients with an ulnar nerve palsy may present with a positive Froman sign. So ask the patient to hold a piece of paper between their thumbs and their index finger. A Froman sign occurs due to an ulnar nerve palsy which fails to supply the adductor pollicis. To hold the paper between the fingers, the thumb flexes. Its flexes is supplied by the median nerve. So that's it for the hand examination. I think the most difficult part about it is differentiating between the hand benediction and the ulnar claw. Just important to remember is that the hand benediction involves the index and the middle finger. These fingers fail to flex and therefore remain extended. Whilst the ulnar claw involves the small and the fourth digit, there's a problem with the lumbricals of these fingers, therefore the MCP joint is hyperextended and the PIP joint remains fixed. So I hope you've learned something from this video. Please like and subscribe and thank you for your time.